Okay, <laughs> okay, looks like I'm back. Uh, yeah, the power just cut out for a few seconds there. Uh, of course, my modem is not hooked up to the UPS, so I'm going to wait for that to start up again and all that. So, um, yeah, what was I saying? The Emperor saw that something bad was going to happen on uh, Prison Island. There, there was that whole chained up thing with the chained up giant. Uh, <coughs> and, then, uh, and then Metal Face attacks. Um, and the events up there are apparently going to uh, bring about the end of the world, so um, that's great and all. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, Alvis and uh, Lorothea are being uh, kind of sinister, so that's great. But yeah, um, now that we've got control again, uh, let's go see what Nolly is up to. Although, actually, now that I think about it, uh, I gotta... I gotta check my laundry.
Yo! Um, okay. Alright, what was I doing? Uh, I'm gonna go talk to Melia. Who is not that way. I'll go this way, I guess. Up the stairs. Flat on the on the side of the city before we fall into the ocean. An Imperial Villa is that the entire? No, it's not. What areas am I missing for the map? Arrangements, the fountain, when the colony is up and running, can I steal some ideas? My late mother adored this place. Late mother? But I thought your mum was... Her Highness, the First Consort, is not my birth mother. Members of the Imperial family must take two wives. One Homs, one High Entia. My mother is the Second Consort. I am half Homs, half High Entia. Melia. Yes, Ricky. Since I was young, I cannot walk outside as you see me now, so this garden gives me much relief. What's wrong with how you look? Who cares if you're half arms? You'll always be you. Their way of thinking differs from ours. Different ways. Different morals. So that's why you wear a mask in public? Yes. Shook, in less than an hour there will be a banquet in the palace. I would like you all to come. Oh, Ricky's so hungry, he could even eat smelly oruga. <laughs> There'll be plenty to eat. Finally, some decent grub. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast. What's on the menu? Any high end your specials? Do not embarrass me at this dinner. The expectations lead to disappointment. We are talking about Ryan here. What? I saw I saw sit next to you then. <laughs> I have much to prepare. I will have someone call for you later. We can't wait. <sighs> Is there something wrong? No. You are a funny one. Ah! Emperor! The Emperor foresaw his own death. I guess. Wow. It can't be. Shulk! It's the Emperor. Father! Another vision! Shulk! What did you see? On that tower. On Prison Island. <gasps> what does the siren mean? Mechel! They're coming! Great! <gasps>
see you got your mouth on stitch there, uh, Metal Face. Or maybe he had that in, like, Colony 6, I don't know. Gift to his people, then. Tell me, what happens to my father? He, it follows my last vision. We're on Prison Island. Metal Face and your father are. Prison Island? Why would father go there? No! I must go to the palace. I must stop him. I will go to the audience chamber. Wait, Mamia. We're coming too. Okay, so, Melia's skills, um, she got all of this, I guess. Electric damage. That's pretty good, it's only 400 away, I, uh, yeah, let's go for it. And her arts. Okay, yeah, Melia is the first to, uh, gain access to the high levels of her arts. Summon Bolt being her, uh, being her strongest discharge, uh, that seems good to me. She also learned Starlight Kick at some point, which, uh, I am going to put on her. Starlight Kick is, uh, way better than Bind. Look, I'm not even sure what Bind is really supposed to accomplish, but Starlight Kick, uh, Starlight Kick does things. As you can see, if you use it in a combo after Spear Break, it forces Topple. And, uh... Needless to say, that's really good. Welcome back, Melia. Let's, uh... Oh yeah, we can uh, change her... can change her headgear now, too. We can give you the Panther Top, if you want it. Or, uh... Wasn't there some... Oh wait, no, the headgear. Uh, yeah, the ruby glasses. She's pretty cute with glasses. We also have the cloud staff. Uh, let's see. What can I pull on? Well, ether up is definitely going to be the way to go here. You know, ether all the way. Or as much as we can, anyway. Yeah, having some agility up wouldn't hurt. <laughs> you look like you're a Persona 4 character now or something. It's neat. Anyway, now's not the time for dress up. Let's go. The 
final step. Oop, hold up. And the crisis music stopped. That's how we know things have stopped being serious. <laughs> Alright, well, if the crisis music has stopped, that means I can go get my tea, right? That's how that works, right? kitchen like a doofus. Like my name is Doof and you do what I say. Wait a second, this walkway is uncovered. Huh. It's... So father has gone. I... Callian! The Emperor has proceeded to the island alone. For the sake of the Empire. Why did you let him go alone? Father! His Majesty is fully aware. Alvis. Of what will happen to him. And what he must do before then. You saw something. I did. During our ancient divination ritual. If he knows, then why? Because he is the ruler of the Imperial family and all the High Entia. We must respect his decision above all else. But that doesn't mean... Trust him, Shulk. His fate was decided long ago. No! Shulk, we're going. But Dunban... Respect? Destiny? We don't need rules to tell us when to save the people we care for. You too, Melia. Don't give up on him. The Emperor, your father, is going to die. Dunban! There's only one thing to do. Are you with me? Of course. But you can't. We are Homs. 
what you must. But your laws don't concern us. My apologies, Dunbar. No apologies needed. So, Melia, what's it to be? We go to Prison Island. His Majesty has departed for Prison Island. He is so brave. I just know you'll be able to protect our Emperor. Uh. Purple between Shulk and Mel is here. Okay. This goes somewhere. Hall. Ah, there we go. The whole city is mapped now. Let's see, I can't very well land in the, uh, <laughs> in the fountains, I don't think. Yeah, no, the water won't be deep enough. We're going down the normal way. The boring way, <laughs> I say as I step into the teleporter. Actually, come to think of it, uh, light check. Oh yeah, mind blast. Right, you. I need any belly to talk to. You. Get over here. Me. What do you want? So, mother has been telling everyone she's worried about me. Well, frankly, who I choose to despise is none of her business. The wings on your head look, how can I say, rather stunted. That means you're half Hans, and so I'd rather not speak with you, if at all possible. Perhaps if you were to bring me two pieces of marine marble. Then I could be persuaded to tolerate your conversation. You could find marine marble at Earth Sea, and a schoolchild knows that. Goodness me, I see it's not just your wings that are stunted. Hey, I have marine marble. Oh, so you brought me the marine marble? You people travel together, yes, despite being of different races. Frankly, I cannot understand it. Very well, I'll grace you with a small amount of my time. I'll tell you why I can't stand the other races of Bionis. And they'll start with something quite trivial, to be honest. That half-wit Vidian broke my headwing decorations. And that night as I slept, I heard a voice in my dreams. The Bionis itself spoke to me. It said, only those of pure High Entia blood are worthy. The Bionis deemed to create us, the High Entia, first. The savage Homs are quite simply a joke. No offense. 
As I'm sure you're aware, Vidian's blood is tainted by those savages. So she got jealous of my beautiful headwings and decorations. Clearly she must have stolen them to smash them out of spite. Can't expect anything more considering her heritage. But it doesn't really matter. This marine marble is even nicer than my old decorations. I suppose I could forgive Vidian. That's why you're talking to me in the first place after all, right? Wow, the Bionis is super racist. Okay, yeah, never mind. Uh, let's send the world. Um, I think the person I need to talk to comes out in the daytime. If uh, if the remaining side quests are like a thing at all right now. Building bridges. Alright, Ariel is at the Fountain of Eternity. <coughs> In the daytime? No, at night. Oops. <laughs> But yeah, we're just going to finish this one quest. right past her. Uh. 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 Well? If I told her that, I can't believe it. And now you mention it, I do recall her having bad dreams one night. I get the feeling that was the very day that she changed. Very frightening. Anyway, at least we got to the bottom of this now. Right, I'll go ahead I'll go and talk to Lasunia. She cannot be allowed to think like that in this day and age. I just hope she listens to me. My daughter used to speak to me about her friend Vivian. She hasn't done that recently, though. Alright, and if we go up and talk to Lasunia again uh, between 9pm and 3am...
sounds like uh, it sounds like the high Antia uh, or the Antico family and the Bionis are uh, in opposition to each other. <coughs> Food for thought there. Vivian has come to apologize to me several times. It's becoming a real pain, so I spoke with her normally. Hope that satisfies her. Making up? Question mark? That's Fiora's voice. Ginormous things at 12 o'clock! Ancient creatures that were sealed within Prison Island. They have us in their sights. They must be our target's pets. Perhaps. And I am... See how they like this? Metal Face's voice is, of course, very distinctive. Uh, obviously, Mumpa even has the giant claws <laughs> from the prologue. Oh, did he smash the lighthouse? Ahead. Do we need to use the transporter? We do. But first, we must unlock the seals. Seals? Mm -hmm. We need to unlock two seals to reach Prison Island. Then, a door will appear before us, showing the way. Got it. Move, everyone. Let's go. Open the Katoral Gate and Sultanar Gate. <coughs> uh, where are we at? Okay, I can fast travel over there. This won't take long at all. Especially good because uh, we are still super over leveled.
So, I guess while we are walking, uh, I should mention at this point, uh, the, uh, the ancestor of the Antiqua family mentioned that the High Antia bloodline was under a curse. Makes you wonder what kind of curse, uh... Alright, well, I guess you're just... Man, these things are ugly! Look at these guys! So those of you who have actually read the book of Genesis uh, would notice already, but humanity is also under a curse. Uh, can blame that on uh, our ancestor, Adam, who uh, only foolishly decided to rebel against a command of God when he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's a real thing that actually happened. In fact, I, uh, t while I was reading some, uh, while I was reading some, uh, books, books from the, uh, 1970s, uh, shoot, I don't even remember the author, but, uh, he proposed a theory, uh, in that Moses was not compiling oral traditions, when he wrote uh, the book of Genesis, but there may have been written records, like, by the patriarchs themselves. Uh, like, on clay tablets that were uh, handed down in the, uh, in the nation of Israel during... Well, from creation all the way to the uh, date of the Exodus. And if so, that paints the, the accounts of Genesis 1 through 11 in a very different light. I had never heard that I idea before. Like, I kind of assumed they were oral traditions, but... I guess we can't really know for sure. <laughs> Not with the information we have, anyway. But either way, Jesus uh, definitely spoke as if uh, everything in there actually happened. And, of course, a lot of Jesus' work uh, during his earthly ministry was uh, done with uh, one of his goals being undoing the effects of a curse. Like, God said, Cursed is the ground because of you. By the sweat of your brow it shall yield thorns and thistles all your life. And there were other things, too. Uh, tied up in that. But, like... If you really think about it, Jesus himself, he raised the dead, he healed sickness, he brought good news of the arrival of the kingdom of God on earth, and in his act of sacrifice, he made it possible to restore the relationship between God and humanity. And adding to that, his his followers, the church, like for two millennia since the time of Jesus, the church has been the one to create all of these all of these big universities and hospitals, and the technology we've developed has just improved the way of life for so many people since then. Which is why it's kind of a shame that everything is, um... This isn't where I need to be. <laughs> it's kind of a shame that the, uh, traditionalist Christians have all ran away from their mainline denominations and started new ones. Instead of fighting to... Just fighting for the truth. So 
like, at this point, I guess I'm just gonna shout out to the, uh, Protestant Reconquista. And, uh, I think we should all pray for them, and, like, if you're... If you're a young Christian and you want to, uh... And you want to do something for the kingdom, like... Uh, Consider take, especially if you're a young Christian man, take, try going to one of these mainline churches and uh, getting into a position of leadership. You can make a difference. Also, we're just going to sneak past this guy here. Yeah, there we go. Now we have... Uh, Whatever that is. <laughs> is that supposed to be our our door? <coughs> anyway, we can just fast travel there now. And it's go time! And before I get cancelled on Instagram again, or or TikTok, or <laughs> whatever one it's funny to make a joke about. Uh, the reason I say young Christian man is because, like, it is the biblical principle that men should be involved in leadership. And the Apostle Paul's reasoning for this was that Adam was created first and then Eve. Like, there are roles that men are best suited for, and there are roles that women are best suited for, and, uh... I mean, all the feminists out there, uh... <laughs> need to remember that before they, uh... Before they cross boundaries that, uh, don't need to be and shouldn't be crossed. Anyway, also means this, uh, this year's presidential election is going to be interesting. That's something we've never seen before. What are you talking about? You've seen Prison Island coming. before. Oh, that <gasps> thing. What is that thing? It's also ugly. <laughs> Just Sky Ray, I guess. All right, here we are. Oh, okay, Sky Ray's immune to topple. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Did we, did we win? Already? I guess so. Can anyone explain what this thing is? I believe it is one of the oldest creatures on Bionis. I have only seen them as fossils, discovered around the capital. To find that they were trapped on Prison Island. Was it protecting the island? That would imply it's sentient. I believe it's responding to something primitive. Primitive. It doesn't care who or what we are. Its instinct was to defend against anything. But we'll never really know. We're losing time here. We still haven't reached the island. Too bad Shulk can't use the to read its mind. <laughs> Where are we going? Fossils. I also read recently that um, a lot of a lot of like evolutionary theory and geology and stuff is uh, based on some faulty assumptions. I'll probably get into that after the cutscene. Our 
forces can only take so much. The capital's defenses are sure to fall. Forefathers, grant me your wisdom. Iluna Melruka Taxis. Suko Aruke Meruke Rikine Hako. Here's the giant. It, it, it can't be. A giant. So this is what was sealed away. How long has it been? is our first encounter. It is not you that I speak to, but your blood. The blood that shackled me. I see. Then I assume I do not need to tell you the reason I am here. There is no need. I already know why you have come. It. That is the reason I am here, after all. Got you all excited, Alvis, huh? I need my power to protect my friends. Okay, yeah, we got nebulas, we got sky rays, um, but we're such a high level, we can just walk right on through, huh? So anyway, like I was saying, um, like. One of the big assumptions in, uh, in geology and paleontology is uniformitarianism, which, uh, well, the assumption is that the natural processes which, uh, which shape the Earth and cause it to move have gone on essentially unchanged since the planet was first formed. And, like, so the opposing theory is that there was some kind of Cataclysm that radically changed the uh, radically changed the planet at some point in the recent past, or really at any point in the past. And like, if you subscribe to the chronology in the Book of Genesis, like it it says that like between five and six thousand years ago, uh, or five and six yeah, between five and six thousand years ago, there was a massive flood that covered the whole planet. Like, the water that... The water came from, uh... Well, both a vapor canopy around the... Uh, in the upper Whoa, atmosphere. Big door! Whatever needed this door was massive. It was probably a giant. And a bunch of underground springs. Hmm. You guys gonna let me talk? <laughs> it's just a statue. Don't freak us out like that, Ricky. Is this a person? I can't make it out. This may very well be the appearance of my forefathers. The legends tell that they differed greatly to how we look now. And this is what they look like. They look like Talithia? Wait a minute. I've seen this thing somewhere before. Oh, Dino Beast! Dino Beast! Apparently they look like Talithia. It reminds me of the Talithia as well. Did your ancestors build this island? No. 
the stories tell of this place existing long before my people. No one knows for sure. But we think our forefathers are the ones who sealed it. I wonder what's hidden inside. Well, we'll know soon enough, I suppose.